All right, we are back. Everyone needs an Aquarius. Uh, another week, another fun things. Uh, what are you? <laughs> you what? <laughs> you, you know, I'm going to tell a story here. Bump it, man. My daughter don't be listening to the podcast. She ain't too old. She too not too old. So my daughter almost burned up the career, right? <laughs> So I'm on a meeting on, on uh, not even Zoom, I'm on Microsoft Teams or whatever on a meeting. And I was just making fun of her like, hey, yeah, just letting my new teammates know or whatever. Hey, you know, from time to time, I may be popping out because my daughter is still staying, is still here until, you know, school starts. So, you know, she, I don't know what she going to do. As soon as I say that, I smell something and I hear fire, fire. And Xander go, hey. I think the house on fire. <laughs> so it's like and me. I, I, I'm in the middle of the zone. I just left my call. Like so, like I just came back. I was still in the call. They left the call and like was like, oh no, do what you gotta do. So I run upstairs, smoke everywhere. <laughs> Go into the kitchen. She then had to put some biscuits on five minutes. Already done biscuits, so she just need to warm up 30 40 seconds, you know, nothing major. But she had been on the phone, her friends are still on the phone. The back girl, Xander, what you doing? She can hear the little girl because they on a little FaceTime or whatever, and they like laugh. And I'm like, get off the fucking phone. And I ain't never really cussed at my daughter like that in my life. And she's like, okay, okay, okay. And I'm like, what are you doing? So I'm t- I snatch the biscuits out, I take them out the house and throw them Were out. Were they black? Oh, they was beyond black. They were stuck to the plastic plate. Black. Oh, oh, and she had a plastic plate. Sander. So she's like, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yo, I'm like, yo, why are you not fucking paying attention? Yeah. You get in with your girl. So and, it, and you, it's burning. Stuff is, it shouldn't even got to this point where it's burning. You should have already. Just like, let me know. Like, but you should have got to it before it got this. So how long was it sitting in there and you running around? Chit chatting and not paying attention. Damn. <laughs> so we spent the next hour and change trying to clean up, trying to get it smelling right. I'm looking at remedies online to get smoke out of the crew because it's on the second floor and almost the third floor and in my basement. Damn. Damn. It's just starting to smell decent. I got candles everywhere lit up. You'd have thought we would we had no power. That's how many candles we had lit up all over the house. You'd be like, damn, y'all out of power? No, we not out of Dang, power. Dang, Xander. <laughs> yeah, man. Dude. That's not, yeah. So, you know, I took her phone, no electronics. She went back to the Stone Ages yesterday. She was hurting. She was just like, like, she was just coming down here, just walking out here, just sitting down here, just watching me work. Like, she had nothing to do. <laughs> she could have read a book. No, that she was. She did that. I'm talking. This was like nine in the morning, eight thirty nine in the morning. So she got the whole rest of the day with nothing. <laughs> okay. No TV. No nothing. So she's reading books. She didn't drew. She didn't did. She didn't went outside. She didn't did some of her soccer trainings in the yard. She didn't maximize all she felt like she could do. <laughs> do you feel like it was really fair to take her devices? Yes. Okay. Because because the, the, it, it, it pissed me off when I heard the little girls giggling in the background like, nigga, you still on the phone and it's burning up? <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know what okay. I'm saying? Like, you still on the phone. You ain't okay, even going to get your girls back. So, like, so obviously you weren't paying attention. You sniggling and giggling with these other little girls. No. Yeah. You gotta, I need all that. I need the tablet, no TV, none of that. Damn. Oh no, damn D. Yeah, I, I, and man, I, yeah, I was, yeah, yeah, I was hot because it was smelling like I was literally in another meeting. I could the smell smoke like my house is on fire still. Keep in mind, nothing got burnt up. I cleaned everything. It's just the smell of it. Yeah, the smell of it. Yeah. So I got two candles down here, a fan blowing them. You know, I, I'm. You making me mad again, this Lou? You trying to get her electronics taken again? I'm sorry. Okay, right. 
<laughs> you try to you try to have me retroactively like what you I'm doing? I'm just trying to figure out how she put biscuits on like five minutes. Because it's she just be hitting that little automatic thing like boom, I'll be back. You know, I just know how she like boop girl blah, 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 and just cut trying to come back to the biscuits. I'm like, you finna be 11 Hell. years old. You finna be pay attention. You finna be 11. Pay attention. Pay yeah, attention. Yeah, by that time, I was. But she, doing... she and we had to dial all the numbers in. Yeah, we she did. Only, she only just hit whatever button on there and it just run. Oh, he was turning the dial. Yes, I turned the dial. I didn't have our, uh, digital until college. <laughs> she just hit any button. This is going to start the express. Hey, no, like. I did that once and I didn't realize I thought I put something on maybe like a minute and then put like two or three. No, it was 10. Damn, see? Yep. And yep. that fucked up my microwave low key. And, and it never was the same, to, was it? It was never the same. And so when everything shut down in my office, because I had just had them order me in like a new microwave or whatever that was, so I I took that motherfucker home. You swapped it out? No, I didn't swap it out. Threw my old one out, and then I took my new one home. <laughs> they was just going to give it to somebody else anyway. Hold on. So, hold on. What do you mean? Microwaves, microwaves low-key are still hella fucking expensive. Like, the cheapest no, I know. I, had to I found one. was like a hundred. That I was like was like a hundred dollars. I was like, oh, I thought I was gonna pay like forty or fifty bucks. I was like, uh-uh. No, like if you talk about the industrial ones too, like the one I got, like that's got like hooked into your wall, that mm -hmm. could be a it's like seven, eight hundred dollars to a grand. Yeah. So uh I don't know how much it costs because it was on Staples Advantage where they don't show the price point, and I just so, so you took it from the gig, like just literally took it from the gig, like you the, it was there and you put it in your car. Yeah. How did you get like so they didn't need it for like the break room? It was in my office with my mini fridge. Oh, so it was for I you. I got a whole setup. Room. I got a Q rig. Oh, and this is all on the gig. You just like I just don't need no microwave at the gig. I'm just gonna take that microwave and take it home. Because for the most part, yeah. Or uh, and uh, actually, <laughs> this is what I did. So the office behind me, they got let go. So I just took their microwave. And so, put it back in. Your, so you just kept moving this shit around like a Ponzi scheme, yeah. <laughs> like a microwave Ponzi scheme. <laughs> but I, it wasn't like I didn't tell them. I was like, I'm taking my microwave. Oh damn! Okay, you told them then. So I listen. They it was so much stuff that they was just getting rid of, and I'm pissed because they have this really dope, uh, hardwood like cherry wood wardrobe that they probably used to put in stores but they never put this in a store uh and it's like from restoration hardware i don't have no place to put it i don't have no place to put it because i would take it yes because i took a lamp that was from restoration hardware that motherfucker was fifteen hundred dollars and yeah i i was so mad because that's <laughs> so Johnny was like, oh, I need this, like a lamp, like a good floor lamp or something. And I was like, oh, my job just gave me uh, a lamp or whatever. I was like, I'll, I'll send you a picture of it. He's like, yeah, send me a picture of it. And then <laughs> I looked at that price afterwards. And I was like, you don't need no $1,500 lamp. Stop it. Yeah, and it was nice. It's like brass. And it's it's really nice. So yeah, I was hoping he was gonna say, you know what? It don't really go with my aesthetic here, but it's fine. I don't have nowhere to put it. That's uh, that's my excuse for everything why I don't take things. I don't have nowhere to put it. But speaking of price points, super quick, nigga, I went to get my eyes checked yesterday because I would like was on my last pair of contacts and i think i had mixed up my prescription in my eyes because like they put the prescription in with the astigmatism and so i was like fuck like it was the same number 
but the number like because the the astigmatisms the astigmatisms the astigmatisms are different <laughs> it ain't like oh if you swap them you mix them up it's the same yo nigga, the other day my eyes was trying to focus so hard on the road like it was like uh, uh, trying to get it together trying to adjust. yeah it was trying to adjust so it was like you was almost drunk yes that's how we kind of felt and it was like almost kind of like like just my eyes just could not focus but if i like looked far like just looked like just kept looking like kind of above the car i would be okay but if i looked directly at the car in front of me like it was like blurry and i was like i don't like this so i was fucked up so i went to get my eyes checked do you know these hoes try to charge me 258 dollars us dollars for some contacts and i was like never in the history of me of having contacts have i ever paid over a hundred dollars and i know my prescription is different like and I, I to be my prescription is different in both eyes it's always been like that be prior to me getting the astigmatism always but when i tell you they had me who all the way fucked what up they had me fucked up and i said oh no baby i don't know where they spent half of this F, uh fsa in january getting a ct scan for six hundred dollars well shot not this need to last me the next four months but how many months is left in this motherfucking year <laughs> oh they tried to they tried to they tried to rob you like maybe i said america's best what do you what do you think you're doing and she was like uh let's look at your previous like uh payments like you know like your prescription over the last couple of years that's like yeah do that so you seen it be like $68. One time it was like 35. You seen like, so she was like, oh yeah, because you was a part of the uh the eye care club. So they was you was able to combine, they was double dipping, um, uh, where they was combining like your discounts from the uh insurance and the uh care club, the eye care club. So that's how you was getting all those discounts. So we can't do that no more. I said, well, I can't give you two hundred and fifty eight dollars either. Right. Thank yeah. you. I paid my copay, which was like ten dollars. And I had them look like they wanted to scan like uh, it was like an extra twenty dollars for them to look at the back of my eye it was like some things take photos of it. I paid that. I paid thirty dollars and got the fuck up out of there. I'm going to order that shit on my one eight hundred contacts and keep it moving. Or go to get over. Ain't nobody paying two hundred. That's like for glasses. Yeah, yeah. The, and then she's mentioned something about inflation, bitch. That's a lot of inflation. That sounds like profit to me. <laughs> that don't sound like inflation. That sounds like profiting. That's what that like. Have me messed up, but hey. I'm glowing. You can kind of see my tan on my nose. <laughs> I will show you my. Y'all can see how I'm kind of like this reddish brown now. I'm getting more into my summer color. This is how I like to prefer to look. Not that yellow undertone. The red does it for me. So yeah, here we are. Hey, this first topic is Big Sean interview. You brought this up. Uh, and it's a bigger conversation, I guess, the hate of Big Sean, but let's jump into this. I typically don't sympathize with Charlamagne the God, but in this scenario, I do. I sit down with Big Sean to discuss the nature of the relationship between him and Janae Aiko and what marriage looks like in their future. One of the little secret industry weddings. <laughs> no, no, there has not been a secret industry marriage. Um, mm -hmm. I think that it's a it's a it's a little personal you know what i mean but just like to be real with you just like any people who have dealt with love we've had our ups and downs you know what i'm saying and i think it's still finding the right navigation through it all um i don't know if like if to me marriage 
symbolizes like the best relationship you know people be like well you got to get married to me i feel like having a relationship is first and foremost and like marriage is a byproduct of that and i feel like a lot of people get the idea of like oh you have to get married but then it's like i'm doja this sleep yeah we part of just posted podcast man the best show on this network come on check girl seriously man just posted <laughs> It's just me and those just sitting back talking about what the fuck going on in the yeah, world. Yeah, man. Man. We said labor of love. He said labor of love. I ain't say that shit. Shout out to, uh, you know what I'm saying, everybody coming to watch, though, man. We really appreciate y'all. Holla at y'all later. Hey, man, this nigga just tall for no reason. I'm gone. Please. do regular jobs. Don't forget that. To me, that's almost a fear-based way of thinking, too, because then people be getting divorced. That man is clearly saying a whole bunch of nothing. Now, as soon as I got to the comments of that video, somebody by the name of Introverted Joy says, it's not like Big Sean doesn't believe in marriage because he proposed to Naya Rivera. And you guys know Naya Rivera, she was on the show Glee and then she had passed away in a boating accident. The Introverted Joy goes on to say, and she didn't even have a child with him. Plus, one of the biggest songs was made about her. It's giving, if it was supposed to be her vibes. He playing in Janae Aiko's face up here. He is! 89 Dream said, crazy because he speaks so highly of Janae, even encourages his spiritual growth he went to therapy and everything became more mentally and physically healthy hope it's not another building up a man for his next situation she actually wants marriage Ciao. when i found out that she had this man's face tatted and then covered up and then went ahead and had a child with him this person by the name of bbg says and he's like there's a lot of work that needs to be done before we talk about marriage i'm sorry what he said, still finding the right navigation to it all. But you let her have your baby. You let this woman have your baby and you saying you trying to figure out the right navigation. Just just tell us what you really feel. But y'all, he had more to say. I am oh someone who, I'm not like discounting anything and I'm not saying that we aren't going to get married. But what I'm saying is, is that it's just, I would like to do a lot. I would like to, and I don't like putting our personal business out there like that. Too either. late. But uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, I feel like, um, in general. We're so many, we have so many relationships. It's like being peers, being in a group. All right. Would you tell me, would you get me to sign to wrap it up on it? Yeah, because he, okay. So I watched a portion of this interview um, and that wasn't, it seems like, like normally sometimes what happens is when, when celebrities do interviews, they sometimes get us like a rundown of the questions before. So I can be like, yes, I'm going to answer this. No, take that out. Blah, 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 blah. Like they, they kind of have the option to curate uh, the dialogue, but uh, he didn't, he didn't do that with Charlemagne. And so, he even says at the beginning how he is um, kind of, he's like, and I'm pausing because like, this is me thinking about like your, my response to your questions, like in real time. So it, he was put on the spot. So I will say that because uh, that's how he, he kind of was pausing and uh, answering other questions. So it's interesting enough because Charlemagne, after Big Sean is talking, comes back to him and says that I was with, uh, you know, he's just celebrated like, you know, like being together with his wife or I guess they had gotten married 10 years ago, but they had been together like maybe 14 years prior. Something like that, that he was saying or 16 years prior, something like that, whatever. And so, so Big Sean was just like, well, you know, like, see, it took you, he's like, what took you so long to, uh, you know, like get married. And he was just like, you know, I mean, it's a relationship. Relationships are not perfect. If you will never be married or in a relationship, if you are looking for perfection. And so it was just like telling him the real about the ins and outs about what, what, what it does look like. So if you are saying that you are striving for this, like there's so much work to do, you can also do that together. But also, he yes, he's been engaged before. Yes, Naya does not have a kid by him. I think 
Do yeah, I think that you can say that? And stuff, but everything you can't use the transit property yeah. when it comes to relationships. Yeah, and that's what I was gonna say. You can't use that as the basis of anything. Janae has been married before. Uh secretly. But what what if she jamming it up too? Like we, we just assume that she's the one that heard from Jan like I, I know that those are things like at some point, maybe and maybe it's them taking the time because I think they've been together dating off and on for about nine years. And like and y'all, when she got her tattoos, that tattoo removed, she actually had gotten all of her tattoos removed. So that's also not a strong like basis foundation to say this is what happened. Um, but I'm interested. I'm, I'm interested what that conversation was like when they go home, when he went home, like once this aired, because it wasn't like it was cut up the clip, the pauses, all of that. And it kind of was giving a little bit, to be honest, like it was a little like they could be in a space where things could potentially be rocky. Mm. Because after that, they were talking about. Oh, like, I don't know if it was before or was it after, but somehow 2088 comes up, comes up, came up. And guys, 2088, if you don't know, is a group that uh, Big Sean and Janae formed together, which is a really solid project, by the way. No skips. And uh, was saying, was there uh, like, would there be another 2088? And he was like, oh, you, you know, I'm gonna leave that to her because like, the like pretty much like the, there's music like the project is pretty much done which i already knew inside of so so but um so that's how they end up kind of getting to that point and then he was like asking you know different things about like him being a father and he was just saying like how it was just like a huge adjustment um and he's like especially kind of like having a son like maybe he is like moving through this space of what things, you know, like he clearly was talking about some of the things that happened with him growing up. But, um, you know, Charlemagne said, well, how come you just didn't, he was like, yeah, I was away from my son for like a month almost because she was on the road. Uh, and he was like, well, why didn't you go out on some of those earlier dates? And he was just like, well, you know, I had committed to this and I committed to that. Then I was doing something for the Beverly Hills cop. I committed to this and then ultimately like I I because he didn't even pop up in Detroit for the show, but he popped out for the LA show. But it's giving, it is giving y'all might be tussling right now. And that's just my opinion. And I can see how people can say, you know, could formulate that that thought idea. Cause like those are things that happen sometimes in relationships. You could this person could take you to head through hell. Meanwhile, like even while you're like building them up to be the best version of themselves and that and we have to realize that as women and as men, that sometimes that happens like one, we're supposed to leave people better than how we found them, and how we met them. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer in that. But sometimes them, somebody else might reap the benefits of your hard work with that person. That's true. And I'm not saying spending a block is like a bad thing. Sometimes. I think that it is healthy for people to kind of separate um, and realize like how much they, not that they need somebody, but um, realize like somebody's like value sometimes. And like they're like, and what that person really was bringing to your relationship. You notice how I didn't, when I say bringing to the relationship, I don't mean the table. I mean like, balancing you out like things like that like what kind of brings you joy because at the end of the day like we want people that do compliment us he talks about that her being you know like balancing him out but sometimes even in that balance it ain't always balanced so y'all gonna tussle so we'll see how to end but it was it's, it, it was giving we tussling yeah also, yo, y'all need to get up. Like, yo, these people, the that you ain't got no reason to be up and name this. They don't really, at least, at least I feel like they don't really be having people involved in their relationship for real. For no, real not life. at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
where some people use their relationship as a part of their uh, marketing tools. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I don't feel they may, may, I mean, somebody probably could say, well, they got songs together. That's different, dog. Just you got songs. Yeah. Right on yeah. But I, y'all know the couple well, we, we talked about. All we, we can know is that he made her come nine times in like a day. Who said that? She said that. Oh, that's what, oh, so it's the hate out there. Somebody trying to scoop him up. That's what these girls is doing on the back it's, end. I'm a, it's like, that's okay, where, that's it's where we weird, oh, also commentary, I was telling you, surrounding Big Sean and how people are saying things like, oh, Big Sean is not a good rapper. Big Sean is like, 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 or whatever. And I'm like, first of all, what we're not going to do is that. Like, we're not going to act like he ain't give us some bangers. We ain't shook our ass, like shake our any of our asses to ass. Marvin Gaye and Chardonnay? We're not doing that. So I need y'all to stop. So whatever y'all weird thing is about Sean, we're not doing that over here. Like, go yeah. take that somewhere else. I'm not the biggest Big Sean fan rapping-wise. I'll, I'll 100% admit that, but I'll have no, like, issues with him like that you know he's cool he cool he is yeah, what he did. I, I i enjoy my last all right so, yeah man have so have you seen the lou perlman documentary no but i know who lou perlman is because this is a backstreet boy stand account man it's called uh hold on name of this documentary because i want it's called dirty pop the boy band scan. It's three episodes on Netflix. It starts showing how he basically scammed his way into even getting the bands. He started out owning blimps and it wasn't making so his blimps all of a sudden just start crashing and he started getting insurance money from them. So like he got like three, four, five million from insurance from that. But the problem was, and he always was moving money forward so people that invested in that he's like oh well you know i'm gonna take that flip it with these boy band things i got a hookup with it i'm gonna do it he does the backstreet boys um uh, so then you know that's going and so he's like when they're showing videos of the backstreet boys and nc doing performances for people like you like damn why are they in a random ballroom at the hilton it's those are people that's supposed to be investing that's trying to he keep trying to get to invest every time he would just pimp them out to just have them perform at the drop of a dime going random places. Like, oh, these are my friends. I need y'all to perform for them for this such and such. But it's people he's trying to invest in. But the interesting, one of the interesting parts was you come to find out he wanted so much to be down. His actual record deal was fucked up that he got for Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and all his other little groups. He was getting pimped off by the labels because he wanted to be owned so much and thought he could just get it popping. He never had a good record deal. His money that he was flipping, that he was doing stuff with, was the money he was getting from investors on the Ponzi scheme. That's how he was able to live lavish. The record label, he went in getting that money much off the record label. You come to find out. Yeah. It was all from investors' money that he was doing that. It wasn't, he wanted he didn't make that much from the actual Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, like straight up the late. I mean, he was getting tour money and stuff, but I'm talking about but like label wise, he wasn't they gave him a bad deal even. Cause they the ended up, deal. I think I think it was that the first album he did, but by the time Millennium dropped, which really, really like I want it that way. He was gone, like they had sued him. Yeah, and in sync by the time we get bye bye bye, and what's the yeah, album? Yeah, he did the first album. He did All the first album. Attached. Yeah, no strings attached. No is strings the attached. Yes. Yeah. That that was in sync without Lou Pearlman, though. So he yeah. didn't even get to the albums where they both of them groups made their big money at. Yeah, yeah. Then he had Old was, Town. I forgot about Old Town. He I had remember, like I remember watching some Backstreet Boys documentary or something one time and i'm trying to think if i don't think anybody was like molested by him or anything i can't that's the thing some people were accusing him of that but everybody kept saying like i ain't never like i mean even people that was like mad at him was like dude i ain't never been in no yeah had, it was like weird because like boys. and nobody everybody was like he did some kind of weird stuff but 
I ain't never heard of him. Or he ain't never did nothing. Like, and it's people that's been like, man, fuck him. But they were they didn't be like, oh yeah, he was they was like, yeah, nah, I thought I ain't they never was trying to insinuate that, but I remember in this documentary. Because like Lil Pearl Man, like it, like ultimately died. Like I forget however many years ago. Died in jail. Yeah, and so um, he, just, he died like a couple years after jail. But I also I think he was like a nar uh, like what, what's not narcissist? What's another not narcissist? Sociopath. Yes, sociopath. Yes, yeah. because he really believed that he could get back. He would be calling people and be like, "Do my lawyer working on something, man? I'll be out of here in a minute." And like he ain't got no lawyer because he ain't got no money, but he's like projecting this out so like uh what's the one the one group the one dude thought lfo do you remember the group lfo he had yes well i didn't know he was over lfo lfo See? was uh summer girls yes uh, yes. yes so one of the, so th those were the black they was living with him for seven years they lived in him up till they got arrested he got arrested they was living in his crib still so uh, one of the main dudes from LFO was on was with him in Bali when he got arrested. So they're traveling around the world. He's on the run. He don't know that he's on the run. He thinks they're trying to figure out some other different deals and do some other music stuff. But he said it got kind of weird when they got somewhere and he's like, hey, you, can you go and run your credit card on it or whatever for this, for where they were staying? I think it was somewhere in, uh, maybe it was Bali or something. And he was a good fraudster. That fool... And this is some white privilege for your aunt. Yo, this dude would just make up a thing of like $3 million saying it's from the Bank of Germany, send it to like Bank of America, and they just sent him $3 million. That easy. And he was just like forging it. Because <clears throat> they just knew Lil Pearlman was good. You know, he's this white guy we good for. And he forged so much stuff, they saying in general. Like he was, he was doing so much crazy stuff with that, but... So the dude, he was like, yeah, he was footing most of the bill on the back end of there. Like they were gone for like seven months, but Lou Promo was on the run that whole time. He didn't know. The whole time Lou Promo was doing to do some LFO. Uh, I'm trying to think which dude it is from LFO. Uh, Damn. Um, I didn't know that he came up with LFO. Like mm -hmm. I knew Old Town because I, I couldn't remember if it was New Kids on a Block too, but I don't think it was. Mm -mm. New Kids on the Block is a black man that took advantage of them. That is the same man that took advantage of New Edition as well. Uh, Mr. Uh, hold on. Uh, hold on. Because he he actually and I'm going to tell you the other group uh, that he discovered after that. He discovered three groups. Uh, what is this dude? Because it was name? Old Town. Because that's how we got making the band. Making the band originally started out on ABC, right? And then from there, they took it over to MTV, and then Diddy got it. Right, right. When I he he was I, already he was getting jammed up then. Though when Diddy he was starting to get jammed up. Uh, uh, Maurice Starr. So Maurice Starr is the dude that discovered New Edition and New New Kids on the Block. Black dude. Okay. Okay. But do you remember the group Perfect Gentleman? No. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Oh, Perfect Gentleman. That's for the older, older cats. His son was in that group too. His son was in the group Perfect Gentleman. Lou, uh, uh, Lou Pearlman. Mr. No, not Lou Pearlman. Uh, Maurice Starr. Oh, okay. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to send you a link. Of, uh, you know, Perfect Gentleman. I don't they, know. You, you got to know perfect gentlemen, but I Sorry, forgot. Friend. Oh, see, this is one of the moments uh, where people going to be like, how you ain't know about perfect gentlemen? Just like with the Jodeci. <laughs> we finna get there. Hold on. I'm, here we go. I'm finna share some pictures of perfect gentlemen. I'm finna share my screen, everybody. For those people that may be watching that uh, may not know who Perfect Gentleman is. All right. This is Perfect Gentleman right here. No, I don't, I don't I remember them. Yeah. Perfect Gentleman. 
They had a couple little seminal tracks. Ooh La La was their big hit that everybody knew about. Everybody knew about the Ooh La La joint. Yeah. Yeah. They were, they yeah. Were, they were, they were, but Maurice Starr. So we can say that a black man did take advantage of some groups as well because he did get, he got new edition and new kids on the block. <laughs> Like he owns, I think he owns the first new the kids new. He owns New Editions Ma first album masters and New Kids on the Block's first album masters. Damn, Maurice Star, I believe he owns both of them. Damn, yeah, yeah. Maurice Star is a motherfucker, boy. Damn, damn, no, yeah. I always knew because I remember, like I said in that documentary, I remember somehow they took like one of them like to the outside of. That little ranch style house that Lou Pearlman had, and it like was it Brian or like how or like Nick or how it was one of them, and it was just saying how like it's just like it was just like weird being back there and like how uncomfortable they were. Well, one of them like the I forgot which one it is, but one of them looked at Lou Pearlman like a dad, and he like the Backstreet Boys sim had a beef internally for a second because they sued Lou Pearlman as a group. But he felt some type of way about it, it, it within the group of like why they did it. Cause he looked at Luke Perlman as like a dad because he didn't have a dad or something like that. I think that was I think he was the first person he and he was the first person he discovered to make the group. He was the first person, I believe. I forgot which one that is. I don't think it was Howie. I don't think maybe it was an uh -oh. agent. That sounds like Brian Latrell because Brian and Kevin. Brian and Kevin are cousins. I think they originally because I know Kevin no, is it's not Brian Latrell. It's Kevin. I think it's uh Kevin Richardson. Okay, so Kevin's dad had died. Right. But yes. Kevin, so his dad didn't grow up, and his dad was gone. Yes. No. So that's, Kev, that's weird because Kevin' daddy died like around millennium. Oh no, that's not him then. The, um, because and maybe it's AJ. I can see that. I don't. I don't think I ever heard AJ talk about his daddy. So I can see that. Maybe. Or maybe it's oh, either God. AJ or Howie. It's either AJ or Howie. Okay, okay. It's either one of them because okay. I'm just trying. One of them was in the it's AJ R. Howie was in the documentary. I know that. Okay. Did the person um, have a lot of tattoos with painted fingernails? But that's the one that was in the documentary. Okay, so then that's a, I think that's AJ. That's AJ. Which side yeah, that's the one okay. in the that was in the documentary with a whole bunch of tattoos. I I, I, I want to say something. Um I know no, it is Kevin Richardson. It is Kevin is Richardson. Kevin? That's so yep. weird. Yep, because he's the oldest in the group, and he was the first one to be uh, the first one to audition. Covered. Okay. Um, still weird because I remember I, Kevin Daddy. Because da Kevin Daddy, I think he was maybe he was sick for a minute because I think his daddy died like of cancer or something, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but but him and Brian be beefing because they're, they're like I think they're like first cousins, but they was beefing. Uh, okay. for a minute, low key outside. Like this is way after, actually, not too long ago, because that motherfucker was on some like Republican Trump type shit. We what? And then and Kevin wasn't fucking with that. <laughs> uh. so, you know, it was a period of time where Kevin wasn't even in the Backstreet Boys. It's so weird, and I'm like, I don't so know. it was a period they was going out. Um, they were still before, touring like and making albums, and Kevin wasn't there, and then Kevin came back. Oh wow! Yeah, I mean, I like know this is about the Backstreet Boys. I, 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 this is a Backstreet. Listen, I was listening. It, it will be moments where I will go and listen to the chapter one, like all they, they, they hits, like everything. And I just want to say this: we talk about different white boy vocals. Or we talk about yes, JC and NSYNC really. It should have been what Justin Timberlake was, okay? Like, I'm looking at it real amazing. quick. Kevin was out for six years from 06 to 2012. Okay, see? Yep, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So he left, that means he kind of left. They had one album, like another album or two after Black and Blue. Yeah, so he, <laughs> he wasn't on Unbreakable, yes. This Is Us, and This Is Us. Okay. So 07 and 09. Okay, so then, um, so yeah, so anyway, but motherfucking AJ J. McLean, Alexander James McLean, is he can the blow. Voice. 
he and you could tell his best friend his best friend, aj is your best friend black or your friends black because like you can hear like he was clearly very heavily inspired by like r&b gospel maybe or whatever because even the runs the i only listen to 90s music podcast is a show for 80s babies who were 90s kids if you were a no limit soldier then this is your show. If you believe that cash money is not an army, but was a Navy, this is the show for you. If you and your friends ever tried to sing a song written by Escape, In Vogue, Shy, or Voiced Men at a talent show during middle school, this is your show. The I Only Listen to 90s Music podcast is a bunch of 80s babies talking about all the songs and things that we loved when we were kids and teenagers. So if you went to the skating rink and you were at a lock-in, this is the, the show for you. If you think that Tevin Campbell um, was the original prince of R&B, this is the show for you. If you don't understand the, the conflict between Monica and Brandy, but you're kind of on Monica's side and understand why Brandy got punched, this is the show for you. Make sure that you tune in, subscribe, click the little subscribe link. We're here, we're gonna talk about all things 90s music. This is the show for you. Just like, like even listening to to him on um, "I'll Never Break Your Heart," I was like, AJ, you are that nigga. I mean, you're that guy. I can't nigga again. But like, AJ is you so it, you using it. You using it as pejorative. Yeah, <laughs> AJ is like, I mean, my God, just so talented. And you know, I, and I'm, I think what happened is it's just like he he tried to do this other alter ego called Johnny No Name, which kind of like alternative, like type stuff, which kind of <laughs> make our panties drop, sir. So like that's what it was, and I think he's like doing stuff solo now. Um, but yeah, like he was just really talented. Like I just go back and listen to like the runs and all of that. Brian too. Brian can all of them. Backstreet Boys. Vocally, everybody in Backstreet Boys can sing. I'm so not, is, I, is, that, is it Backstreet Boys greater than Instinct? For me, yes. For me, yes, because like I said, all I, I've I've only heard Chris Kirkpatrick sing once, and that was like on the first album for Instinct, and it was crazy. I don't remember him singing no solos after that. It was just Justin and JC. And um, Justin Timberlake, you're kind of fucked up for not taking that meeting when they was trying to have y'all all go on tour. And so they had went to New York without him. And you still trying to be- oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Break this down. So what's going on? What happened? Maybe. Okay. So there's been a lot of buzz since the trolls, like they all performed together at some concert that Justin Timberlake did. And- uh, because they came together for some song for like the second trolls or whatever or third trolls or however, yep. whatever fucking number this is, and um, so people you for a long time honestly people have been wanting them to get back together and go on tour, uh, and it just always seems like the person that don't want to do it is Justin Timberlake, and uh, Justin Timberlake recently had been unresponsive to calls and emails regarding just a meeting regarding a potential reunion tour. So everybody else. I mean, the month, the big money out there is the th gold tape put, honestly, to put new kids on the block, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, Boys the Men are all on one tour, and New Edition all on one tour. Like that's the money money maker right there. It's too many of them to do that where you would have to, they would have to charge like a thousand dollars for anybody to really see. Or, or you do it, are you do one night in Vegas with all of them or something where you where you can't Maybe. charge that? But um or even just simply just do a Backstreet Boys and Sing Tour. Backstreet Boys and Sing Tour by itself would be good. Backstreet Boys have done something with with uh new kids on the block before. Yep. Shout out to yep. Jordan Knight. They've been doing, they been doing, I mean, they've been doing it for a while. Doing, but Backstreet Boys never stopped doing like touring, they have cruises. They just had a Backstreet Boy like meet up thing in Cancun. So it's just like, and then now they do stuff. I, I, there was something that 
AJ and Joey Fatone from NSYNC, they just did something in Vegas. And then speaking of LFO, there's some free concert down here in at Pershing Square where it's like like some of those bands, it's like LFO, I think it's Old Town, maybe, maybe 93. I don't maybe not. But Chris Kirkpatrick is performing by oh, himself. Wow. Like, so I'm guessing you're gonna perform your NSYNC hits. You ain't what I'm not about to do is miss a check. So they went and met up. So I don't know what, what the outcome is going to be. If they come and say that it's only will be worth it. You know, we only would do it if it's all five. But Justin, that's kind of messed up. And, and and you act like it's like justified. Uh, and future sex love sounds, Justin. Bro, chill. And your license currently is suspended. And you should be trying to do things to... Because people... we. Britney Spears allegedly is turning that book into a movie. I think you need to go do that damn tour. Oh, wow. I mean, honestly, I mean, Britney's been kind of the one that people have been kind of, especially that Crime Crime, uh, Crime Me a River, hasn't, she's been kind of thrown on the bus, though, for this that whole situation, right? He, did, he allowed that to happen. She talks about all of that in that book. He needs to apologize. Like, apparently, damn, I think she, did she get an abortion or have a miscarriage i think that's something that happened too mm. by him mm -hmm. Damn. and you still need to formally apologize to janet jackson that's for sure that's for sure what do i know but this is a backstreet boy stand account and yeah yeah no i, I look i had a i mean i like i started like dang these cats ain't stop making albums stop touring they they doing what they supposed to do. Like they ain't let 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 it, let let the Lou Perlman thing slow them down at all. Not at all. Not at all. But and it's kind of messed up. Lou never got his bread though. It's like he was right there, like on both groups. But he he got a little bit, but then get that second the the albums where it's like the ones like I mean let me look at let me look at Backstreet Boys. Because uh, Backstreet Boys so. Millennium set a record. And for however many units sold in the first week for like a pop right, so album, or the like first, boy first Backstreet Boys album went platinum, just plain uh, platinum. Um, the second one went six times, mm -hmm. but that but that Millennium went thirteen. Yeah, and then and that's in the U.S. Yeah, and then In Sync ended up breaking that record with no strings attached. And then, and then they went eight on the next one in two thousand. Mm -hmm. Fifteen, no, fifteen million worldwide, five million U.S. for that next album. Oh, let me take that back. Millennium made twenty-four million sales worldwide, thirteen million U.S. God damn, that album was so good. It was so good. But I'm saying, Lou didn't, Lou didn't get, Lou didn't get to the paper, man. Listen, them niggas. Listen, them were the niggas that low key kind of started playing stadiums. Cause they played at America Center. Boys and Men was playing stadiums, though. They weren't playing a, well arenas like football arenas like yeah. that. Like yeah, they, they did Soldier I Field. Going to know Boys and Men at I, I, was, I saw Boys and Men at Soldier Field in Chicago and on on the Budweiser Superfest. They was the headliners. Okay, no shade. Don't Super do it. Superfest do is it. different. Don't do it. Don't do it. What you but say about Super, the Bullets? They the play Superfest at fucking Riverport Amphitheater. It's not the same. But no, Bullets is Superfest in 94, 93 was humongous. Yeah, like, it's different. You know, I was conceived at a Bullets is Superfest. So it's I was like outside of Bullets is Superfest, okay? You got it. You got it. The, the, the people in the comments will Look, agree with me on that. Bullets is Superfest 1970, I mean, 1980. Bush Stadium. My parents got to rocking and rolling. I was born in February, <laughs> 81. <laughs> the Brothers Johnson was on stage. <laughs> Ooh, doom, 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 doom. <laughs> Get off my line. But anyway, yeah, so, yeah. I, no, I, get your, I get your point, though. I get your yeah. point. It's so funny because I will never forget moving to LA. This is just random. So, like, mm -hmm. I've seen Blackstreet Boys in concert like a couple times. 
And um, Backstreet Boys was performing at, like, uh, we have this spot called The Grove Guys, which is like this spot where you kind of want to go be seen. It's not like a mall. It's like an outdoor shopping experience or whatever. It's not like it's a whole bunch of stores. But, uh, yeah, so they have this huge Christmas tree lighting thing. And Backstreet Boys was performing. It's like Backstreet Boys, Melanie Fiona, and like somebody else. And so I was just Melanie literally- Melanie Fiona, that's an interesting combination. Okay. Yeah, y'all mean Christmas music, whatever. Yeah. So I'm telling my coworker, I'm like, like I was like, yeah, like I think I'm going to go to Christmas tree lighting because I ain't seen Backstreet Boys perform. I, you know, like since I was like in high school, you know, in college- you you know like we scraping to get by or whatever so i ain't spending no money on all kinds of tickets like that except for beyonce and maybe mario but whatever it was we was like okay let's go we we got a group together we all gonna go because it's like the, the the store was closing early uh but whatever it was like when we made this decision i turn around and it's fucking brian latrell from the backstreet boys and i was like and so he's gonna do this to me Oh wow! I was like Brian. I was like, look. I was like, I, was, I know that was just really weird. We was just talking about the Backstreet Boys and going to the like tree lighting, and then I turn around and you're right there. So yes, was I startled? Absolutely. And I was telling my coworkers that I haven't been to a Backstreet Boy concert like in a minute. He was like, you ain't been on none of the the cruises. We be doing this and that. I was like, I just graduated from college. What money? <laughs> <laughs> well, I be talking to niggas like they my homeboy. <laughs> hey, you wildin' for that. <laughs> what money, nigga? Like, <laughs> he's like, well, I guess you're gonna see us perform outside. I said, like, yeah, <laughs> and I am. <laughs> All right, this next story. This is, I mean, he's he's our favorite guy. Did not know that this was possible that he who he's dating now. Dr. Umar has transcended life um, in so many different ways. I was not yeah. expecting you to say talk to Umar. Dr. Umar Johnson, yeah. He was, he's the number one comedian, but then he's now turned another page into like the Dayton gossip blog section of the game. I didn't even know you, he could even do that. Still looking for the school to open, but he's in the news uh, once again. Here we go. Kiana has been spending an awful lot of time with Dr. Umar Johnson. Listen, I don't know, friend, from this picture. Y'all looking like... You said what? I said, no, nosy bystander or noises by bystander is just our homegirl now. Yeah. <laughs> like a nice and cozy couple. Now I was perusing through the streets and I saw this image of Sukiana and Dr. Umar Johnson. And yeah, they're friends, but I don't know, man. They look like they just got married. And when somebody else saw this picture, they said, is it me or do I see chemistry? No, girl, it's all of us. We all see chemistry in this image. <laughs> okay, okay, but that's not all the internet had to say. Now somebody by the name of Eatmo said, they look like they married with kids. They do, they do look married with children. <laughs> They go together real bad, real, real bad, okay? Now, somebody by the name of Isidore Nior said, it's wild this looks so right. LOL, I don't know what they got going on relationship-wise, but I hope they work out, LOL. LOL, me too. But it's not the first time we saw Sukiana and Dr. Umar Johnson together. Remember, sometime last year, we saw this image of them together, and everyone was like, whoa, they look so cute together. What's going on? And no. Yeah. Now... I don't know. Dr. Umar said he is not in a relationship with her uh, multiple times, but I want to, I don't think they're in a relationship. I think she maybe likes the support to what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? Let's just, yeah. But what if they really were dating? <laughs> Listen, I, I'm kind of here for it, but also, They would, it wouldn't last long, maybe, but also, okay, so we have to remember that people like celebrities, like we're here, like I say that, like we celebrities, we, we celebrities, yeah, we might not be Hollywood it. celebrities, but we, you know, we all yeah, know, look. uh, G level, you know, what I'm saying, yeah, <laughs> G -level um, we but, up. but I, because like we, we have our front facing persona. 
and then we have like who we really are like after the lights and the glam and stuff uh, is off so i think the only like what would could they would class based on suki's like lyricism and the videos and what she raps about that will be the conflict because yes we know umar johnson loves a a black woman he is very black pro black woman but we also know that he would be offended by her her lyrics he would right. be like you need to tone it down right Talk that's the stuff. thing though like that's the crazy part about what if they were together and he was like and she totally changed over another leaf and she ain't talking about popping pussy no more on songs. And she goes totally, you know, uh, you know, Pan-Africanism. And we get Sukiyana Pan-Africanism music. That would be funny. I, I, I like, I like Suki. I think, I think Suki is a really uh, pretty girl. I don't know. Uh, go back to that, that picture of her. Suki, I'm, no, 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 I'm, no, no, no. I'm, let me stop. I'm joking. I'm, I'm being. I'm putting. Let's I'm say guessing. this. I'm when guessing. she is not like okay, so some people need to make under. So just how you see that picture of her, like that second picture, the first, well, the picture of them like she in the white dress. See, Suki looks really good there, and so I think it would be it would be for sure a new version of her. But I don't know what would happen. Should it not work out? Like, do we get Suki that's like kind of for the streets that yeah, I don't I don't know. It would like, but I I 110% agree though. Uh we all felt that same energy from that picture. Yeah, but I'm I, and let, what an amazing world we would live in if they were dating for real. What an amazing it world. It would be hilarious. Would be. It would be, oh. th listen, this year's calendar has been chaotic as it is. <laughs> and, 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 and I don't know what, what, what spell Cat Williams cast on the world. You're putting it back on the cat. For sure. Absolutely. But here we are. So to dream the impossible dream uh, would be Suki, Suki and Umar Johnson to go together. And that's all I'm saying. Man, somebody that I, like we, we disagreed on this in the pre-show, uh, but I'm going to play this. I think this man needs to stay out, stay stay low. But on behalf of me and party, we've been working on something for y'all. So, so, so you get you get the summer over with. Do what you need to do. I know all you girls are outside, and when it gets a little chilly, party next door and Drake album will be right there for you. We love that. Right there for you. You have a good night. Thanks for whoa, 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 whoa. You said he should do this. I said he needs to take off the rest of the year. Here's the thing. First of all, I like Come and See Me. I like that song. Not gonna never not like it. And I like it. Who's that by? Is that Party Next Door? Party Next Door and Drake. Yeah, I've, I've never liked the song from him in my Who, life. PND? Yeah, never liked the song from him in my life. I, like I said, I've never listened to a whole PND album, but I like that song. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying your comeback album can't be with Party Next Door, <laughs> but I will say him doing some R&B type music is to get away from that though, and I get that you want to get away from rapping, rapping. I but I think he needs to take off the rest of the year. I'm gonna say something controversial. I enjoy Drake as an R&B artist more than I enjoy him as a rapper. I think most people would say that <laughs> because to me. I don't know. It just seems more believable, but I also understand entertainment gimmicks, tricks, turning tricks and all of that. Right. Not that I ever turned any. Um, but I, um, I believe that he kind of has to, um, 
do something because like now i mean the the hype has kind of died down regarding the drama and i believe i believe that he's doing what anybody else would do it's just i i took my l that's what it is i ain't acknowledging it and i just gotta move on with my life i no longer have to sit in this whatever this is and i just have to i gotta get back to doing what i do best but also the only thing that's still strange to me is that this nigga said he was taking a break he was taking the rest of the year right. that's but what i was getting ready to say what happened to your stomach issues that you was having no 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 remember before he he was before he kicked off the beef with kendrick he's like i'm taking off i'm yeah. gonna take a break or whatever and then he started fucking with kendrick and like coming at kendrick well, how okay again somebody explain to me well, how was he fucking with kendrick Oh no 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 no! Cause so Kendrick drops the like like I mean, like that or whatever. I'm talking about like the, in the period he talked. They remember he drops the uh, the first joint uh, push ups, and then he comes back the week later saying uh, Kendrick, where you at with the uh, the t the Tupac AI thing we talked about? He came out with that song to be like, where you at? Where you at? And like poking him like he never mentioned Drake's name in his song, even though we knew he was talking about Drake. Yeah, but he didn't mention. They were just shading each other for a while. Yeah, but he was mentioning Kendrick in his diss song, and then like when you coming out, you been you ain't dropped nothing in th uh, twenty days. What's going on? And that and that was supposed to be the time he was supposed to been chilling. <laughs> he was supposed to be taking a break then. Yeah, I um. He needs to take off the rest of the year, Dom. Look, we finna get in the college uh 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 HBCU college homecoming season. You think not like us not gonna be playing still? Yeah, uh, we'll be. Yes, I get it. There's gonna I, be a line name called "Not Like Us" <laughs> for somebody fraternity or sorority. Is gonna be "Not Like Us." They gonna have people making fun of other schools saying "Not Like Us" when the, uh, the fall season starts. Take off the rest of your Drake. I get what you're saying, and I I can receive it, and I don't have mm -hmm. to respect it. But no, no, no. it's just I I just that's the only reason why I was like you know you can. also know that his ego won't allow him to do that like he's scorpio but i i'm i'm not do does that mean that we gotta listen to it and subscribe to the shit absolutely not I'm just but saying, I, I, I i felt like around this time we're kind of winding down fall or you know like it's coming summer just really started here in la but you know, fall is coming, and I, I, we, I figured it's fall. He gonna be getting this still. <laughs> That's my point. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. But I think I, this, no, no. It's gonna be the bands are already starting to practice. It's the bands, like but I don't. I think. I think by now, to be honest, I haven't seen. We haven't really seen any conversation surrounding it anymore. I think it's kind of the next thing is kind of happened. Which also sidebar. What's the next thing? Tell me what's the next thing. And if not like us, it's not the thing going on still. What's the next thing? You can have that. Like that I'm just saying. I'm, my whole point is like the I, last I'm big thing like, is you being. I think. I think so much has like like now we're like focused on our. our the I think table I'm tennis team for the Olympics won and said not like us in okay. Korea. I'm saying. <laughs> I, I think the conversation now has shifted. Where we are now, get like we're in the like gearing up for this, you know, voting in November and this yes, election. That's so that's why I feel like nobody's talking about it and the conversation has shifted. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and that's why. And it's cool, like it's oh, like it was it was a couple months. He had fun, he, it was a long run, and, and and that's it. Like, like I'm gonna say something. I said, you know who was real quiet. I think I mentioned that before. DJ Khaled. It's been oh. really quiet, so I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for DJ Khaled would be the one to jump on the Drake track with him first. Yeah, and work with him. he'd be the he would be the first one. He's that kind of guy. Though. I've never liked DJ Khaled. What he stands for, everything. I get. I heard he's a hustler and he does it, but he just seems like he's that dude that just want to hop on it. And what does he do? What does what he, does he do? do? I'm sorry. What does he do? That's I all mean, I am. He's a producer. No, he's not. 
I wouldn't he don't produce none of them tracks. He curates. That's what he says he does. He does not produce any of them songs. He curates, but he has a hand in it. Everything he touches turns to gold. Pretty allegedly, much. them last few albums been whack. I never listened to a DJ Khaled album, so I can't tell you. You but got I'm further, not you from the you got further I than me. I just thing. like wild thoughts. Okay. I, he didn't produce that either. Nigga, I don't give a fuck. I like it. He on a track. <laughs> oh wait, on, is that see. no? That's not busted on a beat. Hope oh, no, that's not busted. That's definitely DJ. No, I'm gonna tell you who produced I don't that know. Beat. You can tag it. Speaking of, y'all gotta y'all gotta stop body shaming people. I don't think I think I don't think Aqua will be doing that. I hope y'all don't be doing that. But let me Rihanna be a mama. Let Rihanna have her mom body. The bitch look good at crop over. Let her live. That's all I got. Let's wrap it on up. Where can people hit you up at? Find me on the Instagrams at the St. Angeles. Also subscribe to my YouTube page. Um, what else am I working on? I'm working on some stuff. Working on some stuff. I'm working on some stuff. All yeah, right. Working on some stuff, y'all. Like, yeah. Yeah, make sure you go over there, subscribe, get in, get in on it. Get in, get in on it. All right, y'all. We will see y'all next week. Peace. <laughs>